This video is sponsored by Skillshare. All right, today I have a tutorial I'm really excited to dive into, which is how to make a tune water shader and blender. This is something that I have always tried to figure out. So the first thing we're going to do here is destroy the default cube because we hate it. Then we're going to add a plane here, and then I'm going to zoom in on that plane and I'm going to switch to material view so I can see what I'm doing. Alternatively, you can come up here and you can go ahead and click the shading tab if you want. and It'll kind of set this all up for you by default. So I'm gonna zoom in here on this plane so we can see what we're doing and start working on our materials down here. So I'm going to create a new material for this piece here and I'm going to name this Tune Water. And then I'm going to delete this default node and I'm going to be using an emission node because I don't want any light to affect my tune shader. I want it to have no shadows. Now you can use whatever type of material you want to use here to react with the texture that we're going to apply to it, but this is what I prefer. So the way we can do that is we can add a mix shader here go ahead here and we'll just plug this into the bottom node there and then up here what we will do is add a light path so if you search light path and put a light path here and then add this camera ray to the factor so let's go about creating our water texture that we want to apply to this here so what we're going to do first is add some veroni textures So we'll go ahead and add one there. And we're going to be using two. So I'm going to start with one here and duplicate that one. And on this top one here, we're going to change this from F1 to distance to edge. And then what we're going to do is leave these by default because we'll be plugging those in and come down here. We're going to change this one from distance to edge. And if we want, we can go ahead and plug that into our emission shader and kind of see what our shape is giving us there. So I'm just going to leave that plugged in so we can kind of follow along what we're doing there. So now let's go ahead and add a noise texture. So we're going to be using this noise texture to drive some of these elements here on a Veroni texture. So for the noise, I'm going to go ahead and you can play with the detail and the distortion. Um, with the method we're doing, they don't necessarily affect it all that much, but they do change it a tiny bit. I'm gonna turn this roughness down to zero. I'm gonna change this detail to 0.25. And keep in mind, none of these numbers are exact. You can adjust all of these based on the shape or the size of your object. I'm just using the default two meter plane here. So I'm gonna come back down, distortion. We're gonna change to 0.1, and then I'm going to plug this into the randomness. So I'm gonna take our factor here and I'm going to drag that into the randomness there. And you can see we're starting to kind of get some of those distorted edges. Now, what I'm going to do is go ahead and also plug that into the randomness up here as well. So now what I'm going to do is add a color ramp here. So let's go ahead and add a color ramp to this one first. So you can come down here and click search. We'll look for color ramp. And then I'm just going to drag that over our node here. And this will allow us to adjust the color here of our texture. So we're gonna change this from linear to constant. And you're gonna notice that it probably goes all black. And if you take this and drag it up, you can kind of start to decide how much of a line you want there, like how thick you want those kind of foam lines to be. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna put mine pretty tight right around there. And then what we need to do is go ahead and change these values to whatever values you want the color of water to be. So what I'm going to do is I have my hex code saved. And if you want, I can give you those hex codes. So this first one here that I'm gonna use on the right is 30E3CA. And then for this one here, I'm just gonna take a slightly darker version because this is kind of like the water pattern underneath and we'll do a foam layer on top. So for this one, it's really just a slightly darker version, but that's 2AD3C9. And with that, you can kind of see how we're already starting to get our water texture there. So let's go ahead and we're going to do the same thing for this one here on the top. We're going to take this distance node and we're going to drag it into our emission so that we can kind of see that texture again. And what I'm going to do is take this color, I'm going to duplicate it, put it on this one, 
and drag this up here. Now we want this to be our foam layer. So this one we're actually just gonna do black and white. So I'll take this right one here and I'll make that completely black. And you can now see that we have just our layer there. And I want this to be completely white. So I'm gonna go over here to the RGB tab and just drag all these up so that it is 100% uh, white there. And then we can go ahead, drag these nodes out this way. And what we're going to do is add a mix RGB node so that we can put these two together. So first I will search and look for a mix RGB node. So the difference between the mix shader node and the mix RGB node is the RGB node will mix color information and texture maps and things like that. Think of it kind of like a Photoshop layer, whereas mix shader is meant to mix like two entire shader trees together. So that's kind of the difference there and why we're using that here. So I'm just gonna drag this over top here. And if you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, which I do and everybody should by default, you should just be able to drag on top of those lines and it'll make those connections for you if you're wondering why yours isn't doing that. Now for the factor here, we're gonna crank this up to one. We're going to change our blending mode to screen and it's a bit backwards here. Whatever one is on top, will, or whatever one is on bottom, I should say, will appear on top with the blending modes. So if I go ahead here and I put this down here, it will screen on top of our image there. So with that, we kind of have that plugged in. But you'll notice that because we just duplicated this and it has all the same settings, that this right here is just covering up the dark lines we had underneath. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add some mapping nodes. So we're going to add two mapping nodes and a texture coordinate. So let's go ahead, add a texture coordinate. We'll put that back here and we're gonna be using the generated texture coordinate. And then we're going to use a mapping node. So we can leave most of these settings by default, but what I'm going to do is duplicate this one and we're going to feed this generated uh, point here into our vector point data up here. Now, if you have it UV unmapped or you wanna use object or camera or a different texture coordinate view, you totally can. But for the sake of this tutorial and the fact that I just have a simple plane, I'm just going to use the generated node there. So now what we're going to do is drag this into our textures. So we'll go ahead, drag this one into the vector point of our Veroni texture there. And we'll go ahead down here, take this second one and drag that into the vector point there. So now we have two different mapping nodes here, which allows us to kind of do some different scalings and rotations and things like that. So we're gonna do on this bottom one, let's just go ahead into the Y here. We're going to type in 90 degrees and you can see that rotates the texture and that's giving us a nice layering effect. If you want, you can continue to do this and add a few more layers. But for now, I'm gonna show you how we can go ahead and add some nodes so that we can make some changes if we like. Let's take a minute to talk about Skillshare. Illustration by Design, a guide to elevating your drawing skills is an excellent course if you're looking to improve your illustration skills, which can be really helpful when you're doing things like textures for this water. If you wanna import some manual animations, grease pencil, or just texture painting your characters in general. They have thousands of inspiring classes for creatives and curious people on topics and including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. I've been using it for years and I love it. I've improved my characters, compositions, and layouts through their many design and illustration resources. They also have a great selection of 3D classes, including some made by me. Skillshare is great for beginners, pros, dabblers, and masters. It's especially great for lifelong learners who love to explore. With such a large library and variety of topics, Skillshare is a really great way to expand your skill set to make you a better all-around 3D artist. Start learning for less than $10 a month and get two free months of premium membership and explore your creativity. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna just organize my nodes a bit here and bring those up. So now what I'm going to do next is add a value node. So by default, all of our textures here with this mapping node are set to a scale of one. So if we wanted to for say, change the scale of this water and make it appear as if the water was much closer or much further away, we would wanna change those scale values. So I'm gonna show you how we can go about doing that. So let's go ahead here and add a value node. 
and by default it's set to 0.5 so I'm just going to leave that so you can kind of see the effects there and I'm going to go ahead and drag it into the scale there and drag it into the scale there and you can see that because that value is smaller it has brought us in closer so let's go ahead tap that the one bring us back to where we were so now we can use this to kind of scale but you'll notice that as we scale in super small or if we get really big it starts to kind of ruin the effect we had of the distortion with the noise so we're going to add a few math nodes to help us out on that but there will still be some manual adjustments so let's go ahead and look at some of those now these are pretty simple math nodes so it shouldn't be hard to follow along but just do exactly what i do here so what we're going to do is we're going to use the multiply node so to do that we will add a math node here and we will set that to multiply. And what that's going to do is it's going to take these two values and multiply them. So 0.5 times 0.5 or whatever value we feed into here. So we're actually gonna be using a couple of these. So let's go ahead and drag these back here. And we're going to duplicate this twice here. And I'm just gonna set mine up like that. Now what I'm going to do is drag my value node into this here. Then I'm going to drag my value node into this down here. Then I'm going to drag this value node into the top value here. And then what I'm going to do is take this value node here on the top, and I'm going to drag this one into the scale of our Veroni texture. Then I'm going to take this one and I'm going to drag it into the scale of our noise. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to set all of these to one, meaning that they're going to return back the same value that we have there. And then lastly, we're going to take this one and plug it into the scale of our other Veroni texture. And you can see that what we're doing is we're timesing one times 0.5. So we're getting kind of some weird results there. So this node here, I'm going to set to one. So that's not affecting anything. Let's go ahead and set these all to one to start. So these are kind of changing some of our values because the default scale of noise textures was actually five. So if we go ahead and change that to five there and you peek at our scales over here, we had, I think around 2.5. So if we change that to 2.5, you can see that we're getting pretty similar numbers there. So now what we can do is use all of these to animate our water. So for right now you have a good kind of like static water image and you can see here that let's bump this up to something like 10 or that might be a bit too much. Let's do something smaller like three. So there you can see that we have water that looks like it's pretty far away but it's kind of losing that curled look. So what you can do is most of the adjustments you're going to use are on these two nodes here where you can play with the values here. So I've noticed that with the multiply node feeding into the Veroni textures, as you get further away from your water, you're actually gonna wanna kinda make this scale a bit smaller. And you can see how we're starting to get some of our warped water back. And then here with the noise texture, a lot of times you're gonna wanna bump that higher. And then you can see that it looks like our normal water again. So let's talk about how I animated that water. And that's what this node is for here. So I'm gonna go back and return this to kind of a easier to see value. So we'll go to one here and I'm gonna go ahead, change this one to two. Maybe do this one, uh, let's see, just try three there. And like I said, these values are totally subject to change, just whatever you think looks best, but I think that looks kind of good right there. So I have a value of one here, three here, and seven here. So now what you can do is take this multiply node. What this is going to do is multiply on top of this, and you can use this as kind of your animation node. So you wanna keep these values pretty small, but if you go to like 1.25, we can see that it's starting to curl. And if we go to 0.75, we can see that it's kind of curling back the other way. And what I did is I just went ahead and if you hit I here, you can actually insert a keyframe. And then I moved forward a couple frames and hit I, and then you can do that kind of back and forth. And what that'll allow you to do is kind of create a animated water texture. Now I found that this added a bit of glitchiness sometimes, but I also found that you could subtly 
kind of rotate your textures here on your mapping nodes, and that was another way to animate. So with that, you have a Toon water shader, and I'm really excited to see what you create. So please tag me on Instagram with anything you make with it, and if I see it, I'll try and share it.